In this video, I'll be introducing the basic terminology you need to study classical genetics. When we approach genetics, we have to go back to the starting point of what makes us who we are, the DNA. The central dogma of biology states that DNA codes for RNA and RNA then codes for proteins, and these proteins influence an organism's traits. What your DNA says is the baseline instructions for how your body functions. Your DNA contains segments called genes. Each gene contains a DNA code for a specific protein or a piece of a protein. You have tens of thousands of genes in your DNA, each coding for a protein with an important function in your body. For instance, you have a gene called TYR that encodes the protein tyrosinase, which is an enzyme that helps build melanin, the pigment that creates your skin color. If we focus on the human genome, that is, the full set of DNA coding for one human organism, we can see that it's broken down into 46 individual molecules called chromosomes. These chromosomes come in pairs, so each person has 23 pairs of chromosomes in their genome. Each pair contains a chromosome that came from the organism's mother and a chromosome that came from the organism's father. This pair is called a homologous pair, homo meaning same. While these chromosomes come from different parents, they contain the same kinds of genes in the same locus or location. For example, the locus of the TYR gene, which codes for tyrosinase, is close to the bottom of chromosome 11. So you'll always find this gene in the same locus on chromosome 11 across all humans. Now how does that fit in with the idea that we inherit different traits from our mothers and fathers? While the locus of a gene does not change on a chromosome, the nucleotide sequence at that locus may change. These different versions of a gene are called alleles. Each allele has a slightly different nucleotide sequence and therefore codes for a slightly different version of the protein associated with the gene. In classical genetics, we usually see genes that only have two possible alleles, but there are genes that have many different possible alleles. For the TYR gene, there are more than 100 different variations, each coding for a slightly different version of the protein. For the sake of this video, we will focus on the allele, let's call it big T, that codes for the fully functional protein that successfully helps make melanin, and the allele little t that codes for the version of the protein that is non-functional and unable to help produce melanin. As you can see, the gene TYR is located on chromosome 11 and a person's genome has two copies of chromosome 11, which means they have two copies of the TYR gene. These two copies can be the same allele, coding for the same version of tyrosinase, or they can be different, each coding for different versions of tyrosinase. Your combination of alleles is called your genotype. For example, you could have the genotype big T, big T, meaning you have two copies of the big T allele, or you could have the genotype little t, little t, which means you have two copies of the little t allele, or your genotype could be big T, little t, having two different alleles. When a person has a genotype that contains two of the same allele, they are said to be homozygous, again, homo meaning same. And if your genotype contains two different alleles, you are said to be heterozygous, hetero meaning different. Now if you have two copies of a gene, then your body accesses and uses both of them to make the protein they code for. So if you have the genotype big T, big T, all of the tyrosinase you make is the functional kind that can help produce melanin. If you are homozygous little t, all of the tyrosinase you make is the non-functional version of the enzyme. This person will be able to make melanin and therefore have pigmentation in their hair, skin, and eyes. This coloring is the person's phenotype, which is the term for the physical manifestation of a person's genotype. This person has two alleles that code for defective tyrosinase, which will have a phenotype characterized by a lack of pigmentation or coloring in the skin, hair, and eyes. This is known as albinism. Now what about a person who's heterozygous? They have one copy of each version of this gene. Like I said before, both genes are used to make protein, which means the person is making some functional tyrosinase and some non-functional tyrosinase. In this case, the person makes enough working tyrosinase from the big T allele to mask the fact that 
the faulty tyrosinase is not working. So this heterozygote will have the phenotype of having pigmentation in their hair, skin, and eyes, and they will look just like a person with the big T, big T genotype. In this case, the big T allele is said to be dominant over the little t allele. When they are together in a heterozygous genotype, the big T allele can mask the little t allele, which we call the recessive allele. So a person who is heterozygous will have the phenotype associated with the dominant allele big T. So you need at least one dominant allele in a genotype to have a dominant phenotype. And you have to be homozygous for the recessive allele to show the recessive phenotype. It's customary, as we've done in this example, to make the dominant allele a capital letter and the recessive allele a lowercase of the same letter. Because heterozygotes contain both alleles but have the dominant phenotype, they are said to be carriers of the recessive allele. They don't show the recessive phenotype, but they could pass on the recessive allele to their offspring. In this case, the heterozygote is a carrier for albinism, a disease that results in a lack of pigmentation in the hair, skin, and eyes. To review, a human genome contains 23 pairs of chromosomes. Each pair contains genes found in the same locus. The different versions of the gene are called alleles. Which two versions of the gene a person has is called their genotype. A person with two of the same alleles in their genotype is said to be homozygous, and a person with two different alleles is said to be heterozygous. The physical manifestation of that genotype is called the phenotype. In heterozygotes, one allele may be able to mask another allele in the phenotype. This allele that is shown in the phenotype is the dominant allele, and the allele that is masked is the recessive allele. A recessive phenotype can only be displayed when a person is homozygous for the recessive allele. And those are all the terms you need for a good start in classical genetics. If you want to learn how to apply these terms and predict mating outcomes, see my video on Punnett squares. If you want to take it a step further and learn about non-classical inheritance, see my video on complex patterns of inheritance. And if you want to learn how to trace genes through family trees, see my video on pedigrees.